Hello, everybody. Nice to meet you. My pleasure being with you. My name is Marcin Dokimov. I'm a professor of sociology and cultural studies from Cardinal Stefan Wyszyński University in Warsaw, Poland. Together with my colleague, professor of nursing Anna Majda from Jagiellonia University, we uh, prepared for you a series of lectures on how to manage religious diversity. Consistently with the learning objective of our uh, program, this module will aim at providing a sound interdisciplinary background, critical perspectives useful in approaching the relationship between religion and care in our contemporary societies. Of course, we will not uh, stop uh, with providing you a theoretical background. We will also equip you with uh, uh, practical skills and competences and also knowledge that will help you uh, coping with uh, both cultural and religious diversity. Uh, basic on selected, referring to selected world religions such as Christianity, Buddhism, Sikhism, Islam, uh, etc. Uh, we will provide information, uh, key issues on attitudes of uh, followers towards health, illness and death. Welcome back to our first lecture entitled Introducing the Transcultural Nursing, the role of, the role of culture, religion, religiosity in Patient's care <coughs> requires meeting not only the biological and psychological needs of individuals and their families, but also the cultural, religious and spiritual needs arising from their identity, cultural background and beliefs, which is a holistic approach. Religion often provides spiritual guidance as well as an emphasis on maintaining health. Religious beliefs often influence patients' attitudes and behaviors, so it is important that healthcare professionals understand these issues so that they can provide culturally appropriate care. When caring for a patient, it is important to understand why adherence or not adherence to treatment may occur uh, given the patient's religious and cultural beliefs. Enhancing cultural competences by providing patient-centered care, care is a way to mitigate the challenges of healthcare in a multicultural uh, environment. An individual's culture and religion can greatly influence their views on health, illness, diagnosis, treatment, healthcare mm, and providers. Effective care should be consistent with the patient's cultural values. <clears throat> Developing cultural competences of health professionals becomes a part of professional competences in knowledge, skills, attitudes, a moral imperative, a professional and ethical duty to communicate effectively with people from other cultures. Health professionals need knowledge and understanding of patients' backgrounds and beliefs in order to provide culturally sensitive care. There is a need for health professionals caring for patients from different cultural backgrounds to be prepared to provide culturally appropriate health services to every patient, regardless of the social, cultural, national, ethnic and or religious background. Skills that can be useful for effective and productive intercultural communication and acquiring cultural competences include openness, empathy and adaptation. Madeleine Langer, Langer is credited with spearheading uh, the development of transcultural or intercultural nursing theory. Having received her doctorate in anthropology from Catholic University in Washington, D.C. in 1965. Early in her, her career, she became interested in multiculturalism and its relevance to nursing. Her first nursing internship, which she did in the 40s, in an internal uh, medicine and surgery unit reinforced her belief in the importance of caring in nursing. Her subsequent experiences working with children from different cultures, uh, whom she cared for as a clinical specialist in mental health, made her realize uh, 
that many health-related behaviors are culturally determined. African-American, Jewish, German, English children exhibited different behaviors related to eating, sleeping, playing, and the way they communicated was also different. She concluded that nurses should be knowledgeable about the different cultures and religions and their impact on health behaviors and be very sensitive to cultural distinctiveness of According to uh, Leninger, the goal of nursing is to provide care and culturally congruent care. Uh, her theory may be summed up as uh, the, uh, uh, may be summed up with following assumptions: people are born, uh, uh, live, and become ill and die with a system of cultural beliefs and practice. Cultural caring is the essence of nursing and the central dominant and unifying feature of nursing. Cultural care has more differences than similarities. The aim of nursing is to provide culturally compatible care. Lack of cultural compatibility in the provision of care creates stress and ethical conflicts that disturb interaction. Last but least, nursing practice of, technological, of a technological nature increases the distance between nurses and their patient, uh, uh, and the, and the patients. <clears throat> the main premises of which Leninger based her theory was the belief that people from different cultures perceived and practiced care in different ways, but that there are also some similarities between cultures in this regard. She called the common elements cultural universalism and the distinctive, uh, distinctive as uh, cultural uh, diversity. Consequently, her theory is called the universalism and diversity theory of cultural caring. According to her, culture is embedded in worldview, religion, spirituality, philosophy, political and legal factors, social and economic factors, technological factors, but also educational, ethno, uh, historical, and environmental mm, context. So here she introduced this uh, sunrise uh, model, mm, which is composed of three mm, levels. One, the first level, world views, the second, health systems, and the third, forms of assistance by nursing, as you see, combined, you know, and the impact uh, on uh, each other. An important element of this uh, rising sun model uh, is that nursing uh, is nursing care that is compatible with the patient's culture, with consistence, uh, cons which consists of two systems of like thought, which is emic, and professional, which is ethic, and you, you have to take into account both of them. Leininger uh, emphasizes the importance of knowledge gained through self or other people's experience and knowledge gained through formal education. The nurse should combine these two types of knowledge and be aware of the patient's knowledge and beliefs about uh, ways of self-care and self-treatment. She lists three forms of assistance provision. One is, so firstly, helping the patient to maintain and sustain current patterns of behavior. This type of intervention can be used with the patient's belief and culturally based behaviors. Secondly, negotiating uh, change. For example, helping uh, parents who are vegan and whose child has uh, a protein deficiency disorder to follow a vegetarian diet with non-meat animal protein. And third, last but least, re-evaluation, which involves modifying or changing existing behavior to more health-promoting wise, but also while maintaining the patient's culturally based values and beliefs, especially when the patient's views threaten his or her uh, health. And adopting the theory of transcultural nursing in practice stands for avoiding standardization, allowing the therapeutic relationship between nurse and patients to be strengthened, as the theory supports mutual respect and awareness in which, uh, uh, in which each person treats and values uh, the other's culture, increasing sensitivity to the needs, values, beliefs, expectations of people from other cultures. The transcultural nursing paradigm enables at least three elements. Uh, first, developing nursing as a science and profession, 
and secondly improvement uh, of the quality of care and last but least helping the nurse to avoid uh, stereotyping, stereotyping, stereotyping ostracism stigmatization exclusion conflict uh, cultural shock and etc <clears throat> what are the consequences of cultural competences gaps why should healthcare providers and health systems deliver culturally sensitive care? So, firstly, if providers and health systems do not work together to provide culturally competent healthcare, patients may have undesirable health consequences, receive poor quality healthcare, and be dissatisfied with the care they receive because of the ethnicity, race, and religion. On the other hand, <clears throat> the other hand uh, providers may have reduced job satisfaction and reduced quality of interaction communication with patients. <clears throat> Efforts to improve culturally congruent uh, health care at the provider level will go a long way towards facilitating cross-cultural communication and responding to patients' needs by tailoring health care. Understanding the values and reasons for special healthcare requests uh, request will improve cultural competence and provide culturally sensitive care that is good for the patient and family. Uh, and here you have some uh, concrete uh, practical uh, hints how to uh, improve it. <clears throat> a culturally congruent healthcare organization must empower clinical staff with a sense of awareness uh, through training on world cultures and world religions and their potential impact of patient care, educate providers to ensure respectful dialogue with patients about their religion and the impact it has on assessment and treatment, incorporate information about patients' culture, religion, spirituality and providers' arsenal of communication knowledge, and last but least, encourage providers to listen to patients' beliefs and how these beliefs relate to their health, thereby building positive relationship with them. Thank you very much. It was the end of the lecture one. See you during uh, the lecture two.